Okay. So this lesson is called Basic Economic Concepts. And the essential question that we're looking to answer basically is what is the language of the discipline of economics? How do economists speak? What words do they use? And what do those words mean inside the realm of economics? So let's start with these three. First, we have the word utility. Um, a lot of people equate that word to usefulness or the utility room where you have your laundry and stuff like that. But in economics, the word utility equals satisfaction, or it means satisfaction. So um, how much does a good or service offer utility, or how much does it satisfy a person's needs and wants? Okay? So we get that to happen. All right. And then marginal, which we talked about before, just means additional. What's the additional cost or additional benefit? Marginal is additional. And the last word here is allocate. Allocate is just another word for distribute. How, um, we have goods and services. How are they going to be allocated? Or how are they going to be distributed? A bunch of goods and services. Let's give some of this. Let's give some of that. That kind of idea. Okay. Next um, concept you need to know is the difference between scarcity and shortages. Scarcity, we talked about, is that idea that everybody has unlimited needs and wants, but our resources are limited. Things are scarce. That's scarcity. It occurs at all times for all goods. It's basically a forever concept. We're always going to be stuck with scarcity. You can never have um, get all of your choices, the things that you need. Okay? You have to make choices. The, um, the word shortages, though, is something different, and it's temporary. It occurs when producers will not or cannot offer goods or services at current prices. So let's say um, you know, somebody who makes orange juice or grows the oranges for orange juice, they, there's a hurricane and all the orange trees are destroyed and they don't have any oranges left. Now they don't have enough orange juice to produce to give out at a certain price. That's called a shortage. Okay, they don't have enough. That's temporary. It's usually fixed within the market. So scarcity, you can never satisfy all your needs in once. You have to make choices. That's forever. Shortages, a business will not or cannot produce enough at a certain price. Okay, that's just temporary. All right, second concept here we need to know the difference of is price and cost. Price versus cost. Um, in economics, they are different, very different. First, what is the price? It's the amount a buyer pays. So you go to the store, you buy some milk, you pay like three fifty, okay, three dollars and fifty cents. Cost, however, in economics, is not that three dollars and fifty cents. It's the amount that the seller pays to produce a good. So the dairy farmer who's um, milking the cows and sending the milk to the grocery store, that's whatever the cost to raise the cow, to pay the milker, to send the truck to the grocery store, that those costs are costs. Price is what the buyer pays, cost is what the seller pays to make the product. All right. Next concept is investment. Um, in economics, investment is the money spent by businesses to improve their production. A lot of times people think about, and it is, of um, money that you put into stocks or bonds, things like that. But in, in, in the world of economics, when you say investment, that's money that a business, mm -hmm. Apple, Nike, um, Adidas, but what money they are spending to improve their production, to make more product. That's their investment. So an example, a thousand dollar new computer or a million dollar new factory, those are the investments that they put in to improve their product. All right, next concept, goods versus services. Goods are physical objects that satisfy needs and wants. So bread, milk, butter, apple, iPhones, shoes, t-shirts, uh, desks, pencils, those are goods, physical things that you can touch and feel. They're broken up into two categories. We've got consumer goods. They're created for direct consumption, the pizza that you buy at the pizza shop, right? Um, capital goods are created for indirect consumption, and those are the things that make the pizza, the ovens, the flour, the knives, tomato sauce, that kind of stuff. So consumer goods, you buy that in the store. Indirect goods, the store uses that to make the good. The business uses that to make the good. 
Okay, that, those are goods, physical objects. Services are actions or activities that one person performs for another. So you still buy them, they're still something that you pay for, but it's not a physical object that you can touch. It's an action that somebody does for you. For example, teaching, uh, cooking, cleaning, waitressing, tutoring, any, um, when you go to a concert and the band's performing for you, that's basically a service. It's not a physical object that you can touch. Okay. All right, so the last set of vocabulary that I want you to learn right now is the four factors of production. You might have, um, you might remember this from 10th grade when we talked about uh, the Industrial Revolution. You might have talked about it in 11th grade history classes, but you need to know these for this class too. So four factors of production are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And basically those are the resources that go into producing goods and services, the things we just talked about. Uh, Producing goods and services requires the use of resources, and all of those resources, anything that um, that you go that goes into making a product, is broken up into these four categories: land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. LLC, and then entrepreneur. So let's talk about those in a little bit more detail. Land is all the natural resources that are used to produce goods and services. So anything that's in the ground, the actual ground that is used to produce crops, sunshine, rain, water, anything that's natural, Mother Nature has given us, that's called land, okay? Labor is stuff that people do. Any effort a person devotes to a task for which that person is paid. So any digging a ditch, cleaning, anything that a person does, an action. All right, and then capital, split up into two sections. Physical capital is any human-made resource that is used to create other goods, like a tractor or a building or a computer. Okay? Human capital are the skills or knowledge gained by a worker through education and experience. Okay? So those are things that go into making the eyes. And then the last one is entrepreneurship. And this is the basically the person who puts it all together. Ambitious leaders that combine all factors of production to create a good or service. Um, any business needs someone like this that is willing to take initiative, is willing to innovate, and bear the risk. They've got the money to put out to make a product that hopefully they'll be able to sell and make a profit on. And they do all of those things. Take initiative, lead, be innovative, create new things, and then bear the risk, put the money out so that they can obtain profit. And profit is revenue, whatever money they make from their goods or services, minus the cost, whatever they spent to make their good or service. All right, so that's it for today.